So welcome to the third part of today's lecture. Now, you may be feeling a, somewhat a little lost in, uh, about the connection from where we started with in this course and where we are right now. So at the beginning of the course, right, we were studying system to linear equations. And you probably thought, oh, that's what we would be studying throughout the course. But we've kind of made a quite a big detour. We've gone very theoretical and we've introduced vector spaces and subspaces. And so what I want to do is start trying to tie back what we've been talking about in terms of system of linear equations and show that it, as we've been studying these things, we've actually had subspaces pop up as we were going along. We just never called them that. So the first thing that we're going to start with is the notion of a null space of a matrix. So let A be an M by N matrix. Okay, so we're kind of almost going back to week one material. And the null space of A, denoted, denoted null A, is the following set. Okay, so it, it's null A is the set of all vectors in Rn such that A times X is equal to zero. So one way to think of the null A is the set of all solutions to the equation AX equals zero. So this is something we've been studying and we have different ways of describing all the elements of this set. Okay. There's an equivalent definition here using uh, linear transformations and I thought I might just quickly ex ex explain that uh, equivalent definition. Same thing here, let A be an M by N matrix but now we're going to think of that matrix defining a linear transformation from taking vectors in Rn to Rm by multiplying that vector on the left by the matrix A. Then the null space of a matrix A is the set of all x in Rn such that the vector gets sent to the zero vector under this map. And that's because Tx is equal to Ax, which is equal to zero. So these are different ways of looking at the exact same set. Now, null A, of course, is going to be a subset. Okay, It's going to be a collection of objects inside of Rn. But it, it turns out that the null space actually even has more structure. Rn is a vector space. And null A actually is a subspace. So it actually has the structure of a vector space itself. And the proof is actually very straightforward based upon everything that we've learned so far in this course. Well, first of all, the zero vector is in the null space of A, since if you take a matrix and you multiply it by the zero vector, you get the zero vector. That seems pretty clear. Secondly, Let's take two vectors, u and v, in my null space of my matrix. Then I'm interested in knowing what does this, ma what does this matrix do when I take the sum of those two uh, vectors? Okay. Well, using our matrix operations, we know that this is the same thing as au times av. But u and v are in the null space of your matrix. So that means that a times u is the zero vector. a times v is the zero vector. So I get the sum is, in, is zero. So u plus v also belongs to the null space of your matrix. And the scalar, the proof about the scalar multiplication is the same, almost the same. Let's say I take a vector in my null space and some constant or some scalar r. Then I'm interested in knowing about what happens when I take uh, the scalar multiple of u and multiply it by a. Now, using my matrix operations, I know I can pull out the c, the scalar multiple. A times u has to be 0 because u is in the null set. So this is 0. But uh, any scalar times the 0 vector is the 0 vector. So we get that Cu is inside of my null space of my matrix. Okay. So we weren't using this language before, but we were actually looking, when we, when we were looking at solutions to this let me uh, back up here. When we were looking to solutions to this equation, the sets that we were describing were actually subspaces. Okay. And so let's kind of think about 
this particular question now using the language that we've just described. Okay, so I have a matrix here, uh, one, two, two, four, and it's asking to describe all the set of vectors. Okay, so describe in the null space. Okay, and we know how to do this, right? Because it's really going back. Oh, I didn't mean to use that color. Let's go use a different color. We're just going back to kind of the first material, the first two weeks. We have a system of linear equations and we want to solve it. So we do our row reduction and we get one, two, zero, 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 zero. And here I'm doing the augmented matrix. What I see here is that X2 is free. And then I also get that X1 is equal to negative X2. So I'll set X2 uh, to be a T. So we can describe all the solutions, x1, x2, as looking like negative 2t, t, t. And I can just factor that t out. So I have t, negative 2, 1, as t uh, goes through r. So what we can say. Right, is the following. So then the null space of A, which is the set of all solutions X, such that AX equals zero, is given by the set T, one, uh, that should have been a negative two, negative two, one, as I let T run through the real numbers. Okay. And before, before I go any further, let me just kind of point out that let's think about what the set looks like. Okay, so this is a set that lives inside of R2. And let's draw all the points in the null space of my matrix A. Okay, so he, here's my axis, here's my R2. And so we want to plot each of these points. And what this is describing is a line and the, the line, um, make sure I get this right. Uh, let's see, we're going over two and up one. Okay, so this is this line right here. Okay, so every point on the red line is my null space of my matrix. Okay, and so this is a subspace. And note that this corresponds to what we mentioned earlier that s subspaces of R2 look like lines through the origin, which is what I have in this particular case. So we'll stop right there and then the, for this part of the le part of the lecture, and we're, we have one more part where I want to talk about relating the null space to spanning sets. So we'll wrap this up lecture in, in, the, in the next part.